This is the Letterman General Hospital at San Francisco, California. For those outside these gates, the war is over, a thing of the past. For those behind these gates, there's a grim, hard, bitter fight still going on. Take one case, the case of Eddie Rice, aged 33, enlisted from Los Angeles, 1943, holder of the Silver Star, but today, a name and a number in the medical file for five years in charge on a hospital bed. A victim of amnesia, a mind with a blocked out past. Where were you born, Eddie? Who were your parents? Any brothers, sisters? Where did you go to school? What's your trade? Profession? Are you rich, poor, got a girl, married? I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. I just can't remember, Doctor. You had me open. What did you quit for? Did the best we could, Eddie. It'll just have to stay there. Is that final? Unless you want your name on a headstone. That shrapnel's too deep in your brain. Scar tissue has grown all around it. Believe me, we tried. Yeah, I guess you did. Where do I go from here? Eddie, there are two kinds of amnesia, psychological and organic. The psychological form is temporary. It can be cured through psychotherapy. Yours is organic. It's permanent. That piece of steel in your brain has blocked out your memory. Which doesn't leave me much of a future, does it? Of course it does. Physically, you're normal and healthy. You've received the maximum medical benefits. You've completed training courses that make you fit to hold down a job and face life. No address, no next of kin, nothing. Enlisted from Los Angeles. Intelligence ran that down for us, remember? Sure, there were a lot of people named Rice there, but not this Eddie Rice. But Army Intelligence didn't mow Los Angeles lawns as a kid, Eddie. Didn't trade at the corner market. Didn't work with people in a factory, in an office, as you might have done. Now, if you went down there and ran into somebody who knew you, just one person. Yes. If I ran into just one person who knew me, one guy, would come up to me and say, Eddie, Eddie Rice, how have you been? Where have you been? That's it, Eddie. And then they'd tell me about someone else I used to know. And I'd meet somebody else. And another. And another. start. Find yourself a place to live. Get yourself a job. Get going. Get going, Eddie. Eddie! You know, it's a small world, Eddie. We came down here to pick up a little of one thing, and we run into a little of another. A lot of us thought you were dead. Yes, and those that didn't hoped you were. What are you doing in town? I'm just in from San Francisco. I didn't ask you that. You asked you what you were doing in town. I came here to look up some people. Funny, I, I had a feeling that was it. Anderson, one of them? Anderson? Maybe. I think you're lying, Eddie. I don't think you're going to look up Anderson at all. Barrett, do you think he was going to look up Anderson? No, Joe. Not Anderson. Uh, tell you what, I've got a car and nothing to do for a while. Uh, let's go see Anderson together. Any objections? No objection. Stick around. Kelly may still show. Let's go.
honorable discharge of Edward Rice. What's the gimmick? If you'd put away your blackjacks long enough, maybe I could get it through your heads that I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you got yourself a sense of humor, Eddie. You think you come back here with a dumb look and a silver star? That changes a no-good heel? But I'm trying to tell you that... You don't have to tell us anything about yourself. We've got it all down in black and white. Read it, Riccardi. We didn't dream it up. Possession of a weapon with intent to kill. Suspicion of murder. Riccardi. Eddie Riccardi. <laughs> That's not me. Can't be. It only looks like. Five years ago, we hustled you out of town for good. Now what are you here for? You've got to play ball. You need time. You need more time to find out about yourself. Riccardi's just playing dumb, Captain. Put him in the lockup. I'm finding out about these charge papers. If they're phonies, we'll pin a real one on him. Just a minute, Lieutenant. I guess maybe I didn't want the Army to know about Eddie Riccardi. The only friends I have know me as Eddie Rice. I'd like to keep it that way. That's probably the first honest thing you've ever said. Pick up your things. Be Eddie Rice in some other town, but not here. Now, we can't hold you, but you step out of line once, and we step on you. Anything different about him, Williams? Nothing. Riccardi stays in town, there's got to be trouble. I don't know. He had a strange look about him. Send to Washington for a complete report on Edward Rice. That silver star, you really do something to get one. Yeah. Buy it in a pawn shop for two bits. Beautiful, lovely. All right, Nick, let's keep it all business. Who is it this time? Petey, suspicion of robbery. Get him out before they start shifting him around. Petey? Him? <laughs> he wouldn't steal his own shadow. That was William's gag to get him out of the way. I wouldn't know. Bail's a thousand dollars. Inflation. It's the whole trouble these days. Alexander, he unhappy? Nick, keep your mind on your business. Let Vince worry about his, huh? Sure, beautiful, sure. Forget I mentioned it. Take my advice, you leave town. I've got things to do. Adios, boy. You're on your own. Well, he never showed. Odd. We'll hear from him. One of the usual fronts? Oh, you have a lot of Jane Doe's, Nick. Use one of them. Of course, there's a big difference between the Florida oranges and the California oranges. At least that's what the Chamber of Commerce in Florida says. And the Chamber of Commerce in California says... Orange juice, please. Yes, ma'am. Eddie. Oh? I thought it was you from across the street. Hello. Is that the only thing you've got to say? Well, there's a lot more I could say, but... But you... Let's see. Nancy Morgan? Nora Murphy? No, you, you don't look like Nora Murphy. What'd you come back for, Eddie? A man has a right to come home, hasn't he? My car's across the street. I'll take you there. Sure. Thanks.
Vince know you're back? Vince? Should he? You ought to know. Thanks for the lift. Coming in? Who said this was the end of the road? Who's complaining? Not me. Checking in? Long? I don't know yet. Alone? Yes. Edward Rice, San Francisco. 304. I'll throw the stuff in the room and be right back. You say so. I want to talk to Vince. He's busy. Not too busy for what I've got to tell him. Not here. Look, let's not keep where he is a secret. It might upset your whole future. Put me through to him. You talk too much. Another treatment, Kelly? Any... Any second breaks, Vince? I'm easy to do business with. You talk, you live. All I want to hear is your anger with Joe Williams. Give him a cigarette, Danny. It'll relax him. I'm trusting you, Vince. Sure, sure, Kelly. I told you we'd turn you loose. You understand how, how a guy feels when he's been kicked out of the organization? I know. I shouldn't have been a sucker and told Williams about the... about the silver dollar. Forget that. What'd you tell him about this? Nothing. Oh, nothing much, really. Vince. What did you tell him, Kelly? Really, Vince? Nothing important. Just a little of this and that about the about the slot machines and and the take. But I I phonied the figures. Honest, I did. These figures aren't phony. Where'd you get them? Snatched them out of your safe, Vince. Williams was waiting for him. He's going to bundle me out of town, bring me back for the trial. But I was going to duck. He never would have found me. That's the truth, Vince. Hello. Oh, hello, Nina. Sure it's him? I was with him. First I saw him outside police headquarters talking to Joe Williams. Then I drove him to the cartel. He checked in under the name of Eddie Rice, room 304. Want to take that trip, Kelly? Hey, you don't have to worry about me, Vince. Doc? Big Mouth Kelly. You 
think what he's got may be contagious? Very catchy. What's your opinion, Doc? Very definitely. What can I do? The consultation's in agreement. Kelly, you're dead. Oh, and Kelly, when you get to where you're going, have him give you a nice, even burn. Don't let him just fry you on one side. Sorry to bother you again, but has there been any sign of the girl yet? Thanks. you believe in knocking on doors? Who are you? What do you want? So that's where you've been holed up. Eddie Rice. No wonder I couldn't get a line on you. Are you back sightseeing, Mr. Rice? Supposed to be a free country, free town, open to anyone? Not with me in it. You didn't waste much time picking up with the cops. Why should it worry you about me talking to Williams? You've got me confused, Eddie. Only a sucker would walk back in town after the deal you pulled. Some things a fellow has to find out for himself. Not about you and me. I've been saving this for five years. Everyone in life has his Bible. This is mine. I take it out and read it every day. I read it to remind me of a guy I grew up with. Got shoved around with. We used to take a lot of raps together. Some people would call a guy like that a, a loyal friend. He was. Until he turned into a dirty stool pigeon. And let me take the rap for him. Eddie... Riccardi? My good friend who sold me out to a cop named Joe Williams. <laughs> Not worth taking another rap for. In 24 hours, disappear. Otherwise, I might be tempted to change my mind. Give him some air.
Why didn't that girl come back? What did she know about me? Why did she bring me here? Vince. Why didn't Vince kill me? Maybe I deserved it. Maybe Dr. Kemble ought to know. I'd better tell him. I'd better call him. I'd better. Hello. I want to put through a call, person to person. Dr. Kemble, Letterman General Hospital, San Francisco. K-E-M-B-L-E. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Campbell. Let me expect him back. Not till tomorrow. Never mind, I'll see him personally. Union Station. Take me to 7 Braxton Avenue. drink for a nightcap won't hurt you. That's what you think. You could make me forget that thousand I dropped tonight, Nina. I can forget a lot of things, Lou. You, for instance. Good night. Just a minute, baby. I'd like a little receipt for that grand. That's better. Ouch! That's your receipt. Good night. Tell me how Vince welcomed you back. You've said it, so goodbye. I want to know what you had to do with me in my life. And this. December the 24th, 1943. Oh, that was a lovely Christmas. One I'll never forget. Only one of your presents. Sure, I told Vince Alexander you're back. I work for him. This clipping. Why couldn't you testify at the trial? Oh, no, routines. I've heard them all. Listen to me. I'm just out of an army hospital with a piece of steel in my head and no memory to go with it. I'm here to find out about myself, and I'm getting answers the hard way. I don't know you, Vince Alexander, or anybody called Eddie Riccardi. All I know is one person, Eddie Rice, me. You're the last person I can turn to. Please believe me. 
Help me. That's a very touching speech. You lost your memory. You don't know why I couldn't testify at the trial. You've forgotten how you used me to make sure Vince would go to prison so you'd be set free. Well, if you're back to your old tricks again, I've got sad news for you. I tore up your rain check three years ago. I'm not your wife anymore. Out of the station, back to the hotel. like a cop that just lost a conviction. Maybe I have. Take a look at these. Fresh out of the photo lab. Sharks don't talk. The fingerprints spell Kelly. The coroner said he was dead two hours before he hit the water. Too bad. With the information Kelly had for us, we could have put Vince away for a long stretch. What's eating you, Joe? I was a smart cop. I put Petey away to get him off of Kelly's tail, and this is what happens. I feel like I killed Kelly. Riccardi. Think he's tied up in it? Walking back into town that day could tie him up in anything. The case, my baby? All yours. Now what? I figured we shouldn't keep it a secret from Vince. Only six days in the week now, huh? How do you like that? The card must have fell out. It was there yesterday. Nick, who's Jane Doe? Please, Lieutenant, I don't look at the birth certificate. Lots of people don't use their right names. With me, a buck is a buck. I don't ask questions. Before I'm through, Nick, you'll be answering a few. <coughs> it's getting so you can't tail a guy anymore without having the cops jump on you. This town's going to the dogs. Samson and me... Petey, get that cat off the desk. Oh, I was just saying, Samson and me could stand a vacation. You want us to blow town? That's just what I don't want. Coco set you up. And stay quiet. Oh, sure, Ben, sure. Anything you say. Hello, Danny. Come in, come in, Joe. Pull up a chair and rest your feet. I hear you've had a busy day. I figured you would. I was saving you for last. Should I, uh, relax or call in my lawyer? That depends on how nervous you are. I always thought nervous guys bit their nails. Now, let me see. Nick was a little bit hazy about who Jane Doe was. I thought you might be able to tell me. Never heard of the girl. Then there's Petey. And how certain people got to know where and just when to bail him out. Now, nobody knows anything. But we'll find him. We've got all exits out of town plugged. I got a hunch he'll be real cooperative. You see, um, I don't think he knows anything about this. Kelly. 
He's gone and gotten himself killed. Just like Kelly. You never know what he'll do next. That goes for a lot of guys. Take you and... Then again, take Eddie Riccardi. You boys forgive and forget and back in business again. You and Riccardi got a lot in common. Why don't you ask him? At the moment, you're number one. And it won't be any manslaughter charge and out in two years. I put you away this time. It'll be for keeps. You got all the answers figured out, haven't you? I might have. Sooner than you think. Oops. So sorry. I never had a complaint. You call my old boss. He'll tell you my bringing in 500 a night at the gambling tables was a small bag of tell. <laughs> oh, Mr. Alexander, I just came in looking for a job and I was telling Miss Martin. Get rid of her. Vince, we need some new talent. Okay, okay, come back at 8 tonight. She'll tell you what to do. Oh, gee, thanks. You know Eddie's still in town? Uh, yes. Been around to see you? Mm-hmm. When? Late last night. Tell you I gave him 24 hours to get out? No. Well, I changed my mind. I want him to stay. I want you to make sure that he does stay. My job's to work the tables for you here, Vince, and I don't even mind setups like the one with Petey or other deals like that, but. Vince, stay out of my personal life. Listen, you. When Eddie dropped you, who picked you up and gave you help? Who gave you a job? Everything you got. Vince Alexander. I won't do it, Vince. Forget Eddie. When I get through with him. But now you're going to meet him. And I want you to make sure he does stay in town. Five years make you forget that easily? I told you. In five years, you can forget a lot of things. Something for the lady. Rob Roy, please. The same. What made you change your mind about seeing me again? You know, finding out I was married to you kind of threw me. It was even something the boys at the hospital used to rib me about. They had me fixed up with a wife and four or five kids. I didn't know how close the gag came to being true. You still don't believe me, do you? Maybe this will convince you it was Eddie Rice that rang your doorbell last night. Call Dr. Kemble at Letterman's Hospital in San Francisco. He'll tell you the whole story. That cigarette case. Oh? Doesn't it mean anything to you? Should it? Suppose I did believe you. Then what? Then I'd try and make you forget that Eddie Riccardi was ever in your life. You think you can do that? Eddie Rice can. Eddie, 
leave town. Now you're talking like Vince. Maybe I was yesterday. Don't ask me why, but go. Nina, I don't frighten easily. You can take that message back to Vince. Tell him I'm staying. That's what he wants you to do. That's why I'm here, to keep you from leaving. I'd hate to disappoint him. Well, Eddie, don't be stubborn. I know Vince. He doesn't do anything without a reason. Neither do I. Get yourself beaten up again or killed. Do anything you want. Got you over water. <clears throat> Do something, Charlie. Tell Lena Martin Eddie wants to see her. Eddie who? Just Eddie. <clears throat> Wait here. What'll I need? A thousand might bring you luck. A thousand? Give me a thousand. Character called Eddie's outside. Wants to see you. Eddie here? Get rid of him. That's not what Vince had in mind. All right, come on. Ought to be able to pick up some fast money. You're crazy to come walking in here. Maybe I'm just hard to convince. My dressing room is back there. I'll be back before the wheel stops turning. She wanted to get rid of them. I wonder if that dame is trying to pull a double cross. Get down the Golden Horn and pick up Eddie Riccardi. You'll find him with Nina. Just him? Just him. I'll get around to her later. I started to leave. But I kept thinking about everything you told me. If I'd have left, I'd been all the things you said I was. So I'm staying. I'm taking you out of here. Nina, we could have a decent life together. Got it all figured out. Well, you're not taking me anywhere. You push me into this life and I like it. I'm top bait around here, steering nice fat pigeons to the gambling tables. I'm one of Vince's kind now, and I'm keeping my life and my job just the way they are, no matter what I have to do. Come on. Thanks. some champagne. Excuse me for a minute, honey. I forgot I gotta call my wife.
Williams, homicide. Yeah, Barnes. Uh-huh, yeah. Thanks a lot. What's exciting? I said, what's exciting? Or don't you want to wake me up? <laughs> Barnes casing the golden horn for Bicetail. Tells me Riccardi just walked in. Uh -oh. Trouble, maybe? I can think of plenty of reasons why there might be for Eddie Rice. You'll hear from me later. How you coming with that Kelly report, men? Uh, just finishing up for you. Okay, I'll wait. Somebody must have believed in that old gag about an apple a day. Yeah, but they didn't know it would pin a murder on them. <laughs> Quite an appetite. Psychological, creates a false hunger. Well, here you are, Joe. I can go home now. Thanks a lot, Ben. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. I'm interested in Eddie Riccardi, not in what's going on in there. We don't know from Riccardi. I do. Hope not. Raise your bet, folks. Raise your bet. That high or low? Harder is it. Put your bet down. Don't let it happen to me. High or low? Put your bet down. High or low? Harder is it. Yes? Miss Martin? Williams, homicide. May I come in, please? Come in. Eddie was just picked up by Danny. Where'd you take him? You'll hear from me later. Williams, I'm not used to cops with insomnia. What's on your mind? It won't take long. Danny picked up Eddie Riccardi. Where are they? You're in an awful rut. Always asking questions. All right. Uh, let's start over. Eddie was at the Golden Horn with Nina Martin. Suddenly, he wasn't there anymore. So? So? I don't mind waiting. Oh, uh... While we kill a little time, this might interest you. And after we pick up Riccardi, we're going down to police headquarters. You're going to have a manicure on me. You know, you're going to look awful silly when I get through with you. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. Say hello. Nothing more. Hello. Vince, we're at the shop. Do we stay or bring Riccardi up there? Tell him you'll be down. Okay, Coke. Bring him up here.
just when he was coming up in the department. Car 94, 94 to control 4, clear frequency 4, this is an emergency. Control 4 to 94, go ahead. Car 94 to control 4, notify the Homicide Bureau, we have found the body of Lieutenant Williams in his car at Sepulveda and Sunset. Thanks. I had a little accident back up off the side road. I have to go to town and get a tow car. Anybody killed? Oh. No luck at all tonight. Hop in. Bet you thought I wouldn't stop to pick you up, didn't you? I didn't know. It's late. See? That's where I fooled you. Cut the order. Pick up anybody, anything. Green Acres Mortician Policy. If today, maybe a customer tomorrow. Pays off, too. Most people remember the nice things you do for them while they're living. But we sure don't get any complaints about our service from them after they're dead. Uh, family, that is. That accident hurt you any? Got a match? Sure do. ambulance and everything. Wonder if I'm losing any customers. Finished with Joe's stuff yet? Still working on it. It's too bad. Joe's wife sure liked him in that suit, too. Nothing, Captain. Keep trying. He's the last one who might have seen Joe. Okay. Eddie Riccardi. Guess Williams was right after all. Riccardi or Rice. A silver star and a dumb look doesn't change a no-good heel. Attention all units. Attention all units. Be on the lookout for the following described suspect. Wanted for murder. Eddie Riccardi, 
Canadian Betty Ryan. White, male, American, age 33. Foot two, 190 pounds. Dark brown. You phone the cops and do them a favor. Where to find a dead cop and the guy that did it and what happens. The first stop is Nina Martin's. I want Eddie before the cops get him. Then they can have him for a present. And alive. Lights off. Eddie, what happened? You certainly did a neat job of tying me into a murder. Joe Williams was killed tonight. You? I don't know. The last thing I remember was being slugged over the head at Vince Alexander's. Oh, I know you think that. I haven't got time to think. All I want is a few bucks, your car, and you in my sight till I get out of here. Eddie, you've got to believe me. Huh. Believe you? Like you believed me? Give me the key. Why, I turned on you tonight to get you away from Vince. The keys are in the car. You go. I'll try to stall them off. And get a bullet in the back of my head? Oh, Eddie, you've got to trust me. It's your only chance. Quick. The garage. Out. Go to the police, Eddie, before it's too late. With my fingerprints all over the gun and all over William's car, I wouldn't last long enough to walk to the nearest police station. If I did, what could I tell them? Now, out. You want me to go home and wait for Vince to come back again? That's something Eddie Riccardi would tell me to do. Not Eddie Rice. Lights off and the motor running. You've got a gun. What next? I didn't ask for any killings, so I'm in the middle. But I'm not going to be a clay pigeon for Vince Alexander. He can't prove anything dead. That would make Vince very happy. Something I wouldn't want to let happen. Is there any place we could go? Someone you could trust to put us up for the night? I need time. Maybe there is. It's a long chance. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you? We're staying here tomorrow. Stay away 
from that phone. If it rings, let her keep ringing. Get rid of anybody who comes to the door. I'll be right behind you in case you give the wrong answers. What about the girl's place? There and gone. Get a teletype out in her car immediately. Have it rebroadcast every half hour. I want roadblocks at all these points. I want the airport, railroad station, all bus terminals put under 24-hour surveillance. I want every hotel and flop house notified. They're in this town somewhere and they're not getting out. One other thing. We picked up Riccardi's fingerprints in that gun shop. He's got a gun now. Don't give him a chance to use it. All right, start moving. The police tighten his dragnet about the city today. Riccardi escaped just as the police were ready to close in on him after they received an anonymous phone call which led them to discover the murdered body of one of the men today. Every available man... We'll wait till it's dark and get out of here. You couldn't arrange to drop dead before then. Hazel, you've got to believe us. Eddie didn't do it. He should still drop dead. Come on. Give me a couple of clean towels. It's pretty bad. I'll have you out of here in a minute. We'll find the doctor. Go to the police. Let you go to the police. Your car in the garage? Yes. Where are your keys? In my purse. Take care of her. in the moment you return. It's been a different kind of a blank. It's being pushed back to Eddie Riccardi. This, the whole past that keeps me from being like other people. And all that's left is wondering what it would be like if there'd only been an Eddie Rice. If I'd have just met you for the first time. 
Eddie Rice can have that. Take it away, they hated me. Destroyed it. You're good, Eddie. When a baby wants to be born, hours don't matter. Seven pounds, seven ounces. A boy. Doctor, her shoulder. I can't treat gun wounds. She'll have to go to the police emergency hospital. I don't think so. I'm sorry. I've got to report this to the police. Doctor, that report to the police, it'll wait. If you want to pull that trigger, go ahead. Police headquarters, please. Put that gun away. I said I was going to call the police. Police headquarters, this is Dr. Stacy. 93 Chestnut Street. Send an ambulance and a squad car. How bad is it? She'll be all right. You'd better leave. Eddie, I'm scared. I'm scared. Take it easy. You'll be all right. Not for me, for you. Listen, I'm leaving you for a little while. I've got an idea it might work. Something very important. You knew all about me. The people I used to know, the places I went. Think for me. Go back five years. Who was there? Just one person. Give me the answers, quick. What you say is my only chance, the only chance I've got. Only one left is Petey. Can't be trusted. Where will I find him? Not here, Miss. Tell me. Two, three places on Main Street. Fourth and Main. And after Nina ran in front of him, Coke never had a chance. That Eddie sure didn't miss. Coke took three, went right through his breakfast, lunch, and supper. Anybody come around, ask any questions? None I couldn't answer, Vin. Get back there and keep him company. But, but the police. That's exactly what I want. Tell him how Riccati broke into your apartment, found Coke there, pulled his gun and fired. Now do what I told you, just that. All right, Ben. Take her back. Eddie's gonna find a doctor somewhere. And if he does where I think, he'll dump the girl. Start looking for a hideaway. Get going. Spread the news I got a personal interest in Eddie Riccardi. I don't want anything to happen to him until I get there. Unless the cops get him first. You through with him, Doc? Yep. He was a fine specimen. Would have had a long life if this hadn't happened. I'll send you my report in the morning. I'm sure you don't mind coming downtown, Miss Downs. Well, I... If I... I thought not. What'd you find? It was them, all right. Riccardi left the doctor's office about 30 minutes ago. Notified communications? They're blanketing the whole area. A girl? County Jail Hospital. Still out. Whether she's playing it safe or just not talking. Keep Mullen there. The minute she comes out, I want to know. Any ideas? Lots. We need Ricardo to explain some of them. <laughs> if he lived that long. Hello, I'm looking for Petey. Have you seen him? Do you know where to find him? said three or four places. I must have hit 20. And every answer the same. No. A shake of the head, a frightened face. They knew where I could find what I was looking for, but they wouldn't talk. They were scared.
But Vince, appreciate the fact that at least I called you. I let him stay, it's another rap. Another rap, I get life. You've got to appreciate that. And I'd appreciate it if you'd tell me where to find Petey. Right now. Sure, Eddie. Sure. Ocean Boulevard, 25th. Who's that? Who is it? Eddie. Eddie Riccardi. Oh, Eddie boy. Every cop in the city's out gunning for you. Maybe you don't care if you live, but... I got a few more years left. Open the door, Petey. You're dead if you don't. All right, Eddie. You didn't think I'd leave you out there in the cold, did you, Eddie? Five years, no see. They sure got a hot fire burning under you, huh? Yeah. You need a pal, a friend. Sure, I need a friend, Petey. Oh, look, look, friend. Will you, will you put that mouthpiece away? Somehow, I, I still believe they go off. And, and Samson, my cat, you, you remember my cat. He's not feeling too good again. You stay careful. Nothing will happen. Oh, oh sure, sure, Eddie. You're, you're talking to Petey, remember? Any objections to my moving in with you? I'll be gone tomorrow, next day. Oh, me? Turn away practically my own flesh and blood? Relax, Eddie. There you are, Eddie. Nothing's too good for you. How about some food, Petey? I haven't eaten all night. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. Always hungry. Still tied up with Vince? Oh, I do a little private iron on the side. A job here, a job there. Nothing big. <coughs> I'll telephone. A special customer. Yeah. Yeah, an old one. How about sending something over? He's tired and hungry. A pot of coffee and a sandwich. Turkey? Tongue? Egg salad combination? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You got it. You see, Eddie? Everything's just like old times. You say so, Petey. Yeah, I'm getting kind of sleepy. You just make yourself at home. Food will be along pretty soon. Vince has gotten to be a big man the last five years. I'm really getting pretty tired, friend. Why don't you bring me up to date, Petey? I'm really awful tired, friend. How long will it take Vince to get here? Eddie, Eddie, you, you embarrass me. I'll kill you if you don't give it to me straight, Petey. Eddie, Eddie, don't talk like that. Samson's sick. I'm telling you, Eddie. What are you telling me? How long? Five minutes? Ten? Fifteen minutes? Twenty minutes? About, about fifteen minutes, Eddie. Oh, Vince put you on the spot. He sent word to all the boys. Hello, Eddie. Take me with you. You and me was always friends. 
You just stay in front of me and keep your mouth shut and you won't get into trouble. Oh, oh sure, Eddie. You got nothing to worry about for me. Just stay my friend, Petey. Yeah, Eddie. You can go home now. Your friend want a ride? Not tonight. 280. This will get you a thousand.
hear me? We can make a break. Cover for each other. I got a place. You and me, Eddie. We'll start up again. Just like old times. I got money, Eddie. Big money. Samson! 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 Beanie, come back! Samson! Samson, baby. Samson! Riccardi, Alexander, we'll give you three minutes to come out. We're going to start counting. At the end of three minutes, if you're not out, we'll come in to get you. Is this your last chance, Eddie? There's just you and me left now. No deal, Vince. I know you've killed Joe Williams. Okay. No deals. I want you, Riccardi. Alive, Alexander. If you're in there not wounded, bring Riccardi out. You, Riccardi, if you're alone, come out with your hands in the air. Here's where you and I part company. You're gonna get paid off in full. Thanks for bringing him out, Vince. Now drop your gun. I said drop your gun, Vince. And you'll take what I got first, Anderson. All police officers, hold your fire. Don't be crazy, Alexander. There have been enough people killed. Give yourself up. No bargains, Anderson! 
You want Riccardi alive? I want out! What guarantee have I got that you won't kill Riccardi? You don't! Be sensible, Alexander. If we let you out now, we'll get you later. You'll be dead before morning. You got 30 seconds to make up your mind, Anderson. I go, or Riccardi gets it in the back. <coughs> Stay down, Eddie. Don't move. Don't get him to a hospital. That taxi driver must have really gotten to you in a hurry. He did, asking for a thousand dollars reward. I know all the questions you want to ask. I called Dr. Kemble from San Francisco. We knew Vince killed Joe Williams. We found his blood on Joe's clothing. It matched up with our lab files. Yours didn't. And Hazel told us the truth about Coke. I'll just get well. We'll finish our business later. Nina, she's fine. In the waiting room. <laughs> you shouldn't kiss a guy like that when he's sick in bed. I've been waiting outside all the time. They wouldn't tell me anything. I was afraid. It's all right. We'll go away. We'll find that crazy world of yours. Sure. There's only one thing. You'll always be Eddie Rice. For the rest of my life. I have the doc's word for it. Mm -hmm. 